Okay, congratulations, we have just completed the microeconomic part of the course. Um, uh, in the next few chapters, we will look at, we will not be looking at individual parts of the economy, we will look at the overall economy, uh, output level, prices, uh, productivity at the aggregate level. And if you were, uh, if the amount of analytical material was over your head in the uh, last few chapters, then the good news is that in the next few chapters, uh, the, uh, the methods that we will use will be completely different. We will not be studying advanced analytical models. Um, there won't be any numerical uh, and or logical uh, material. Um, in the next few chapters, we will look at uh, definitions of uh, definitions of aggregate output, aggregate income, price level, productivity, unemployment, and so on. So you can take a deep breath now. Uh, we can we will um, uh, study a completely different set of uh, topics, and we will use uh, completely different tools in the next few chapters. Okay, so let's delve into the discussion of uh, aggregate uh, output or aggregate uh, uh, income uh, in the economy. Um, so you, you should think that when we encounter an economy, the first thing an economist uh, uh, would be interested in is how, how large is this economy or how, how rich is this economy or how much economic activity takes place in this economy. And it turn, turns out that we can use the same number to describe the amount of economic activity, the amount of production, incomes generated, and the amount of expenditures in the economy. So we can say that we can use the same measure to describe aggregate output, income, and level of expenditures in the economy. We will say that uh, gross domestic product is a good measure of these uh, uh, variables. And uh, later in the lecture, we will say that the gross domestic product is also the, the best single measure of people's uh, well-being in a particular economy. Okay? Um, and here, once again, this should not be completely new material. We've, we've uh, discussed uh, the flow of resources or, and flow of uh, money within an economy before. Uh, in chapter one and chapter two, we discussed the circular flow diagram and we said that under some reasonable assumptions, if we have a simple economic system with consumers, producers, maybe government, banks, and other entities in the economy, all the flows of resources in one direction should be followed by flows of maybe other kinds of resources in the opposite direction. So here you, sh you should think that under some simple assumptions, the amount of resources used up in the economy should be equal to the amount of monetary flows. So the production level and consumption level should be the same and they should be the same as the uh, expenditures recorded in the economy. Um, and we should think that expenditures by one party in the economy is also a receipt or income by another party in the economy. So we, we, we get the, even in chapter two, when we discuss the circular flow diagram, we got the equality of flows of resources, flows of money and incomes. And as a side note on this uh, um, topic, if there are problems in the economy, such as uncompensated amounts of uh, consumption because of negative or positive externalities, or if there are outflows or inflows away from this simple contained, self-contained economic system, such as if we have imports that are not followed by 
exports perhaps uh, this uh, these equalities may not be uh, uh, valid okay so uh, gross domestic product is defined as the market value of all final goods and services produced within a country in a given period of time. It's a very neat definition and I want you to think that each word or each phrase in this definition is important. Um, GDP is the market value tells us that we are evaluating the amount of output or amount of activity using market prices. We are not, the government doesn't set prices at which uh, economic activity should be uh, valued. It's the market itself that uh, determines the value uh, of uh, all activity. We are including all goods and services produced in the economy and we are only looking at final goods. So we are not looking at intermediate uh, products that will be used in the production of in the later stages uh, so for the calculation of the gross domestic product, we, ig we completely ignore uh, resource markets and intermediate good markets. Uh, we are talking GDP uh, includes all the production take that takes place in the economy, not necessarily all the sales that take place in the economy. So it's important to distinguish the, uh, uh, the time when a product was produced and then when it was sold. We, on the next slide we will say that if a product was produced in a previous year, even though it is sold in the market today, this activity will not be recorded in this year's GDP, it will be recorded in the previous year's GDP. You may think that this accounting uh, 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 a procedure can, uh, can be a nightmare for uh, government uh, uh, workers because government workers have to uh, record very carefully the dates of each transaction, the, the prices, mar um, the market values or market prices as of particular points in time and if the government doesn't uh, carefully record these uh, different timings and different, uh, different values over time, you may think that uh, GDP could uh, contain errors. Okay? GDP also only uh, uh, includes production taking place within a country in a given period of time. So I've already talked about the given period of time that it is important to distinguish production from delivery, from sale points in time. Uh, in addition, we are including all production that takes place within the geographic confines of a country. So even if a foreign company or foreign individual produces good or service within our economy, this production is included in GDP if our national produces output in a different country, it would not be included in our country's GDP, it would be included in the GDP of the other country. Okay. The com uh, components of GDP, um, so a couple of uh, side notes on this definition of GDP. We would say that GDP does not include the production of goods that never enter the marketplace. So the only way to record production is if there is some uh, record of this uh, output being transacted in the, in the official economy. If uh, two neighbors trade with each other without writing a receipt to each other, this trade will never in, uh, be included in GDP. Uh, all goods produced illegally that don't, that are not re reported in official uh, accounting documents, 
do not enter GDP. Uh, imports are not included even if they are consumed by domestic consumers because uh, imports are by definition produced in other countries. Production taking place in other years, such as previous years, are not, uh, are not included uh, because of the definition of uh, GDP. Another take on GDP is that we can say that GDP is a sum of consumptions taking place at, uh, uh, in different parts of the economy. Right. So, 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 so far we've said that GDP can be interpreted as national income, aggregate amount of output or aggregate amount of expenditures. This slide talks about the uh, expenditure definition of GDP. We can say that uh, expenditures in the economy are made by individual consumers, so individual um, uh, households. There are, there are expenditures or consumption taking place at uh, companies and corporations. That, then there are expenditures taking place at, uh, in the public sphere. And finally, expenditures by uh, foreign consumers. Okay? Uh, so generally, when we write the uh, GDP as a sum of these four components, a good idea is to to interpret it uh, as uh, the consumption by households, consumption by companies, consumption by government, and consumption by foreign consumers. But you should think that the, the definition is not so clear-cut. Uh, investment doesn't have to take place at companies. Even government and even individual households invest. Part of the definition of GDP is that uh, uh, construction of new uh, buildings and generally real estate transactions are included in investment rather than consumption and, and we should think that all private households, corporations and government can, uh, can uh, engage in investment. Um, so what is GDP? GDP is the current market value of all the goods and services produced. That means that we are using current prices and we may think that, well, between two years, even if the level of output didn't change, but simply prices changed between the two years, we would record an increasing GDP. And, and you, we may think that that's a problem. Um, because if the output level hasn't changed and simply prices changed from, the, from the, the value of GDP, we would think that the economy has grown, that the amount of ec economic activity has uh, grown, even though only prices in the economy have changed. We will talk about, the, about distinguishing real factors from nominal factors in the economy later, in la later chapters. Um, but in this and next chapter, we will discuss a little bit uh, changing price level uh, and inflation in the economy. So if we are worried about changing price level, if we, if we are in particular level uh, interested in the level of output in the economy, we should calculate real GDP rather than nominal GDP. Real GDP still takes the same level of output that is produced each year in the economy, but multiplies it by prices, by constant prices, or by prices in some base year. So the, the difference between nominal and real GDP is that for nominal GDP we are using current market prices, whereas real GDP multiplies the output level by constant base year prices. And to get a sense of how prices in the economy increased over time, we can calculate GDP deflator as the ratio of nominal to real GDP times 100 
and we would say that if GDP deflator is greater than one, then prices have, oh, sorry, if GDP deflator is greater than 100, prices have increased in the economy. If this is less than 100, prices have decreased between two years. If we compare the nominal and real GDP for the Korean economy, notice that there is a, there is a base year in this graph, the base year is year 2000. In that year, both the nominal and real GDP are the same. And in all future years, nominal GDP is above real GDP. And all, in all previous years, real GDP is above nominal uh, GDP. That should be uh, intuitive. And, and here you should think that because nominal GDP is greater, in this part of the graph and always smaller in this part of the graph, that implies that in all of these years the uh, inflation in the economy was positive. So prices keep increasing in Korea over time. Uh, the final slide on uh, chapter 23 deals with um, the idea that GDP measures uh, well-being of people in the economy. So you should already think that GDP or GDP per person, GDP per, per capita, measure the amount of activity that takes place per person in the economy. Is that a good measure of wealth or well-being? Uh, for various reasons, we may think that there are some limitations to this uh, definition. Uh, one. GDP only measures new activity taking place. It only uh, measures the, the production taking place today rather than production taking place in the past. So if people uh, get some benefit, some utility from consuming goods that were produced in previous years, GDP will not account for that source of uh, utility. Uh, to the extent that consumers get uh, value even from uh, goods that are that have zero market price, um, such as leisure, clean environment, uh, GDP will underestimate uh, the utility of uh, people to the extent that there are there is a production taking place out outside of the official markets. Again, GDP will not account for for that. And even when we look at GDP per capita, that measures only the amount of income or the, or the amount of production or the amount of expenditure on average of, a, of an average person. That doesn't tell us anything about the distribution of income consumption expenditures uh, across different individuals. So if, as a society, if we care about the distribution of uh, well-being across individuals, GDP doesn't uh, answer that question. So, so far I've mentioned a couple of things that we would want GDP to include, but GDP doesn't include them. On the other hand, GDP might include some bad things. Uh, anytime, remember that anytime there is a market transaction, if there is new production taking place, GDP increases. Even if the, the production takes a place uh, for, for a wrong reason. So if uh, uh, military equipment, jails, um, uh, are, uh, or disaster recovery efforts take place, these are expenditures and uh, uh, production flows that are associated with bad events. Uh, uh, but we include them in the GDP. So GDP's, uh, GDP could uh, increase even if there is a bad disaster in the economy. And finally, just like I said about inequality among individuals, GDP does not tell us anything about the regional and seasonal di distribution of uh, uh, incomes and economic activity. And GDP does not account very well for different costs of living between regions within
Korea. It doesn't tell us anything about the different costs of living in different seasons within a year. And it doesn't tell us anything about, about different costs of living in different countries. So this uh, last issue of distinguishing uh, different cost of living in today's time period and in other time periods will become important in the next chapter when we, uh, when we introduce a new measure of inflation, the consumer price index, and we will compare consumer price index to the GDP deflator introduced uh, in chapter 23.